That's great to hear. I'm a big fan of yours, too, God. I really am. Wow. Oprah knows who I am? I can't wait to tell Jesus. Howdy, y'all. I'm Brylin. I don't know what it is about Oprah, but she can make the most silver-tongued preachers masters of gibberish by asking one simple question. What is the truth? Now, Oprah herself claims to be a Christian. However, she is not a Christian. She is a New Age spiritualist that says her faith is a Christian, but to her, being a Christian means being open to every faith on earth and that there are millions of ways to God. And it doesn't matter what you say your faith is, it all leads to God if you're a good person. Oh yeah, and she doesn't like the whole doctrine thing either. One of the mistakes that human beings make is believing that there is only one way, that there are millions of ways to be a and human how do you being. See God? And, and many ways, no, but many paths many to what you call God. That and her path crazy. might be something else, and when she gets there, she might call it the light. But her loving and her kindness and her generosity brings her, if it brings her to the same point that it brings you, it doesn't matter whether she called it God along the way or not. I, I am a Christian, that is my faith. I'm not asking you to be a Christian. If you want to be one, I can show you how. <laughs> but it is not required. I have respect for all faiths. All faiths. Spirituality. So I want to get clear on what I mean by that. It means, my definition is, living your life with an open heart through love. Allowing yourself to align with the values of tolerance, acceptance, of harmony, of cooperation, and reverence for life. In reading books such as Tolly's, I've really op it's really opened my eyes up to a new way of thinking, a new form of spirituality that doesn't always align with the teachings of Christian Christianity. So my question is to you, Oprah, how have you reconciled these spiritual teachings with your Christian belief? I've reconciled it because I was able to open my mind. I took God out of the box because I grew up in the Baptist church and there were, you know, rules and, you know, belief systems and doctrine. This great uh, minister was preaching about how great God was and how omniscient and omnipresent and God is everything. And then he said, and the Lord thy God is a jealous God. And something struck me. God is all, God is omnipresent, God is all, and God's also jealous. And something about that didn't, didn't feel right in my spirit. That's when the, the, the search for something more than doctrine uh, started to stir within me. And God is a feeling experience, not a believing experience. That's right. Your worldview is wrong. Your philosophy is wrong. It's not just wrong. It's an affront to God. The Daily Grace Company is a wonderful company. They have Bible study guides. They have pens and highlighters. They have journals. They have prayer cards, verse cards, Bibles. They just put out their most requested Bible study ever. And it's on the book of Esther. If you use our link in the description below, it helps us out. Uh, it costs you nothing, but it will help us out. Hey, would you consider hitting that subscribe button and being a part of this community with us? I would love to hear from you on a regular basis. And don't forget to hit that thumbs up button as well. You know, when you like this video, YouTube pushes it out to more people and it would really help spread this message. Now, again, there are many pastors that have a major influence in our culture that are very close friends with Oprah and never once will you ever find them rebuking the heresies that she speaks but you will find them encouraging her constantly I grew up in the church joined the church when I was eight years old I heard a lot of preachers preach in my life I've never heard seen or experienced anybody like you wow <laughs> you're gonna make me bless this no. today. dear Oprah you have inspired an entire generation, informed us, exposed us, and challenged us. You bucked the trend and endured the ridicule of lesser rights. As Michelle Obama would say, when they went low, you went high. That despite of all who forsook her, betrayed her, and denied her, he chose her, called her. He made her a promise to protect her under the pinions of his mighty wings. Today we are so honored to have a world changer, a history maker, <laughs> one of the great voices of our generation, Ms. Oprah Winfrey is right here on the front row with us. Hey, Oprah, glad to have you. Let's take a look at a few ways these silver-tongued preachers buckle under the pressure of 
Oprah. I can't imagine that you would have 16,000 people in there and that none of them would be gay. So are gay people also included? Absolutely. Anybody is. You know, you know, Oprah, we sometimes make a, I say we, maybe the Christian community makes a bigger deal out of gay, out of being gay, but... Will a gay person be accepted into heaven as you see it? Well, I believe they will. I think that it's going to be open for all of us or we wouldn't have a chance. Does that mean that you're saying that you believe that being gay would, is a sin? I believe that being, I believe that homosexuality is shown as a sin in the scripture. I do. I do. That's just, that's just the way, I mean, my, you know, Oprah, it's a hard thing in a sense because I'm not, I'm for everybody. I'm not against anybody. I don't think anybody's second class, but when I read the scripture, I just, with good faith, I can't see that it, it doesn't show that that's not, that that being a sin, that it is a sin. The 11th commandment is thou shalt be nice. And we don't believe the other 10, okay? <laughs> We don't believe the other 10. And so anything that's just not nice, and nice is defined as weak, soft, mealy-mouthed, afraid, cowardly, you know, that's the way we define niceness in Christianity. And, and anything that's sort of confrontational and that would dare to say that someone is wrong, it's just not acceptable. This is why pastors stand up today, and when they preach on a topic that's controversial, their message usually dies the death of a thousand qualifications. Do you know that you have been accused of saying that gay people would not be welcome? Oh, no, 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 that's, that's not true at all. That's not true. Does it mean you perceive being gay as a sin? Do you, do you think that being gay is a sin? I, I think that sex between two people of the same sex is condemned in the scriptures. Mm -hmm. And as long as it is condemned in the scriptures, I don't get to say what I think. I get to say what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm not particularly political. I'm not particularly denominational. I'm not worried about any of that. I'm not anti-gay. I'm not anti-anything. I'm just, I'm, I don't want to even be known by what I'm against. I want to be known by what I'm for. I mean, think about it. A guy can, you will not hear a guy stand up, for the most part, and preach on the issue of homosexuality without 15 minutes of justification. Now, I love homosexuals. I have friends who are homosexuals. I am not here to say, da, 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 you know, just say what the book says. Now, these pastors have a profound way of, they, they have to say the truth. They have to say what the Bible says. But but hold on, let me explain. It's not actually what, what I believe or what I would choose to believe. I just have to say it because it's what the Bible says. But, but hear me out. I'm for everybody. I love everybody. And everybody's going to heaven. It's not just that we have to say what the Bible says. It's that we should believe what the Bible says and be unashamed about teaching the truth of God's word. Here's what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, starting in verse 9. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. One thing you're going to notice is that a lot of times when these Joel Osteen or T.D. Jakes or Rick Warren or whatever pastor goes on Oprah's faith show, it never leads back to Jesus. It always leads into a feel-good uh, prosperity type teaching that is all about how do I prosper off of feel good Christianity and how do I find out my destiny within myself again a very Gnostic way of looking at life it's all about this light this goodness this prosperity that's within us that just needs to be unlocked by feeling and thinking good things. And then you'll know your true destiny. You can watch Pastor Joel's entire I Am sermon. Don't ever say anything negative about yourself. You may feel it, but just, you know, zip it up and, and make those positive declarations. It takes time, though, because yes. from the time I heard the I Am sermon, could you lead us in a few I Ams today? Absolutely. Okay. I am strong. I am strong. I am healthy. I am healthy. I am confident. I am confident. I am secure. I am secure. I am talented. I am talented. The good life, okay? Looking good, feeling good, having the good. The only problem with the good life is not good enough. And, and the truth is we're made for more than the good life. We're made for the better life. Woo. Not the good life. Looking good, having good goods, feeling good. But the better life, which is a life moving from success to significance. Significance means you know your life matters. 
you know uh, your purpose. You know the answer to the three fundamental questions of life, which are the question of existence. Why am I alive? Is there a purpose for my life? Does my life matter? When you can answer those three questions, you have moved to the significance level. When you hold on to your history, you do it at the expense of your destiny. Oh, my God. <laughs> Woo! That hit me. That just hit me. Did that hit you? That hit me. Wow. Whoa. They did not think Paul was cool. He is about to go on his day's Oprah Winfrey show. And it is not because he hid his Christianity and talked, looked, acted, and smelled like the culture. It is in spite of the fact that he refused to. He is doing nothing to impress. He is doing nothing to embrace. Nothing whatsoever. He's not truncating the gospel in order to win popularity. We must point to Christ Every time we are put on a stage, it must point back to Christ. Do you believe that only Christians can be in relationship with God? No, I believe that when Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, in the way I read that, Jesus said, he is the, he's the road marker, he's the map. So I think God loves people so much that whether they accept or reject him, he's still gracious and he's still moving and he's still giving you massive red blinking lights for chances mm -hmm. to take a, a right turn where maybe you would take a left, but I believe God loves people. And that's what this whole gospel is based on, it's love. You take the love out of it, we've got a moral book. Some go to this place and argue that what we need to do is, when we're in the culture, don't be too overtly Christian. Because after all, you don't want to turn off the culture. You don't want to go out and offend the culture immediately. So you gotta sort of have a different kind of strategy. You gotta be on the down low with your Christianity until you get to the right place. Here's the Bible saying what Carl Lentz was too afraid to say. In John 14, verse six, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. We must use discernment and know the word of God so that when Christian leaders like this get in, uh, on a stage like Oprah's in front of the entire world and buckle at the knees and are too afraid to share the whole truth of God's word, then we can know God's word for ourselves and recognize when a preacher isn't preaching God's truth. Who are we trying to please here? God or Oprah? Well, then again, Oprah is God's counselor right? God, take it from me, Oprah. It's going to be okay. But hey, let me know your thoughts about all this in the comment section below. I would love to hear from you. And hey, hit that subscribe button and join this community. I would love to hear from you on a regular basis. And if you wouldn't mind hitting that thumbs up button, you know, when you like this video, YouTube pushes it out to more people and it would really help spread this message. And come meet me over on Patreon. You can find our Patreon linked in the description below. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.